This is TPI the podcast. Hey, welcome into this week's episode of TBI the podcast. I'm Lizzie Arbogast Gwen alongside Melody Rathel. How you doing, Mel? I'm good. How are you this morning? I'm doing good. We are here to talk all things crime in Alexander City. There has been several alleged murders in the last two or three months or so, and we want to kind of give an overview of where those cases sit and where everyone is at in terms of bond and their preliminary hearings and that kind of thing. Um, All this sort of started off back in May when Quinesha Davis went missing from Alexander City. Um, She went missing in Dadeville, and eventually, a couple days later, um, Robert Young was arrested for the alleged murder of Quinesha Davis, and that sort of you know, was the first of many of these arrests that happened in Alexander City. Um, these murders, I mean, that happened in Alexander City. And I mean, all just just all throughout Tallapoosa County, because um, although she was from Alex City, her body was found in Dadeville. And um, true. Yeah. Um, then a few months later, on July fifteenth was the, um, there was a shooting that occurred in the 4,000 block of Washington Street. Um, that was the alleged murder of Stephen Huntley, 40, of Alexander City, and Levanta Parker, 25, of Alexander City, was um, arrested for that alleged murder. He was arrested for that murder, and his bond was set at 25000 which we feel like is kind of low um, for a murder of that extent, um, but he made bail and um, is out now, and his first call hearing is set for August 28th. Also having a first call hearing on August 28th will be Keontae Bealey of Childersburg. Now, this was a party that took place on Dadeville Road in Alexander City, a party called Freaknik, Freaknik, We're not sure exactly how to pronounce it. Um, But this party took place, and according to court documents, Mr. Beely allegedly um, fired an AR-style rifle into a crowd of people, thereby causing the death of Shavorian Williams, 25, 26, of Tallahassee. And therefore, he is being charged with reckless murder. Yeah, and he's currently in jail um, and his bond is set at five hundred thousand dollars. Now, if you remember correctly, um, there's a difference between murder and reckless murder, and one is like a reckless disregard of life. And right. so, if you remember the Dadeville shooting, um, those six shooter alleged shooters that were arrested were all charged with reckless murder in the deaths of the four victims of the Dadeville shooting because of similar circumstances. Right. Allegedly, they fired into an open crowd, basically, thereby making it reckless murder instead of just regular, yeah, like regular murder charge. Or another arrest made around that time. This was actually a few weeks before um, Bealey's arrest. Latavian Brownfield, 18, of Sylacauga, was arrested for the alleged murder of Jazion Strong, 19, of Goodwater, um, and first degree assault of Justin Sheely, 31, of Goodwater. Now, in this case, Latavian Brownfield was originally thought to be one of the victims. This this shooting occurred at Benson's Community Center, and initially police were looking for a shooter of a potential triple shooting at that time. They thought that one had died and one and two were assaulted, and then through the course of the investigation, it was found that Latavian Brownfield was the alleged shooter. Okay. Um, well, his bond is set at $500,000 for murder, and $250,000 for assault, and he is still in jail. Um, And he also has a preliminary hearing set for August 28th. And so our listeners know there is a difference between a first call hearing and a preliminary hearing. A first call hearing is really just the first time that you get in front of the judge. The judge reads your charges, under make sure that you understand the charges against you. Also, that would be the time that you appoint your attorney if you do not already have one. Um, and so those kind of things happen in a first call hearing. The preliminary hearing is more where you're starting to get the preliminary 
evidence, maybe a defense, those kinds of things where sort of some of the what's going to happen in the case starts to unveil itself, if that makes sense. Right. More recently, there was an attempted murder uh, that occurred in Camp Hill. Uh, Kiana Ballard, 24, of Camp Hill, was arrested for the alleged attempted murder of Charlie Roden in Dadeville. Um, she shot him in the upper body, fled the scene, um, and according to the Camp Hill Police Department, she was found in the woods uh, nearby and about two hours later. And when they arrested her, she was she had drugs, drug paraphernalia on her, so she was charged with attempting to elude possession of a firearm by a person forbidden to have a firearm, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of a controlled substance. Now, Kiana Ballard remains in the Tallapoosa County Jail as of Monday afternoon, and she um, has a 7,000 total bond available to her for all of her charges. Uh, the attempted murder um, charge has a bond of, I believe, five thousand, and then the other, um, <clears throat> the others are add up to seven thousand total bond. Um, but she remains in jail as of Monday. Now it's interesting if you look at these cases. In all of these cases, after the Robert Young case, all of these alleged shooters are thirty years or younger. Um, one of the things that I talked to the district attorney about, Mr. Mike Segrest, he was talking about the um, lack of gun control laws, especially for younger people, about how easy it is to obtain um, a firearm in Alabama. Um, now, of course, Mike Segrist is a um, proponent of the First Amendment or the Second Amendment, and he is, you know, a hunter and enjoys the sport of shooting and things like that. However, he does think that um, there should be something done because he's seeing these trends of younger people having guns in their possession who either don't know how to use it or have no business using it mm -hmm. um, and aren't obviously using <coughs> it for the right thing. Segrist has also discussed uh, the difference between a standard rifle and the devices or technology that changes a firearm into an automatic, semi-automatic semi rifle. How federally they aren't legal, but in Alabama they are fairly easier, easier to, to obtain. To obtain. And I think also the punishments for having them aren't as severe. Um, as they are in some other states, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely an issue to look out for. I mean, obviously, I think our communities are still reeling over the mass shooting that occurred in April 15th, 2023. Mm -hmm. um, and those were young people involved as the victims and the alleged shooters. Um, young people in the party, young people all around. Um, you know, I always hate to say, like, back in my day, but, like, back in my day, they would be a fist fight and not necessarily pulling out guns on people um, and right. that kind of thing. So it is definitely a trend that we're watching in Alexander City. Um, you know, I don't think anyone can say for certain why more murders have occurred recently than, than you know, in the past, you know, in the last two months than they did in the year before that. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely something that is a trend that I think we're watching and law enforcement is watching as well. Absolutely. And I think it's, you know, important to, you know, going back to how you said back in, you know. My day. Yeah, back in <laughs> your day, um, you know, people would hash things out, for lack of a better word, you know, using fists or just, you know, talking things out. Not um, that we're proponents of fist fighting either. Right, no. Just FYI. Don't, don't fist fight anyone. Um, but I just think some of these younger generations kind of underestimate the impact of what firearms are capable of. Um, and instead of, you know, han handling things in a more, in a less dangerous way, that's kind of where some people resort to think there should be some better ways to handle things, but. 
I mean, it's as simple as you take a test to get a driver's license. Absolutely. Why are we not taking a test to get a firearm? That kind of thing. But right. we won't get on our gun control trip <laughs> at this point. Um, you know, we we also, um, and we've said it before, we're big supporters of the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Um, of but it does have to be reasonable because, um, you know, the violence is increasing um, and it's a scary thing. But we will be sure to keep an eye out on these cases for you guys. Um, we'll be at the first call hearings and the preliminary hearings to see if there's any movement on any of these cases. We'll be watching out for that. So make sure that you're subscribing to the Outlook, following along with our Facebook updates as well. Um, we'll have all that covered for you guys. Stay safe out there. Stay safe out there as always. Yes, we appreciate you guys listening and we will be um, with you guys for another episode soon. TPI The Podcast is a production of TPI Media and brought to you by TPI Digital. It's all about the audience and whatever your marketing needs, we can reach that audience. To find out more, go to tpidigital.com or click the link in the show notes.